is not one vapor permeance that's ideal for an air or water barrier. It really depends on your enclosure design. Where are you installing this in the assembly relative to insulation? Where are you installing this assembly in the world? Are we in New Orleans? Are we in Maine? Are we in Edmonton? Uh, and what is the inside of the building like? Is it a high humidity environment or a drier environment? Or is it a hot environment or a cold environment? So one does need to think your way through these choices of enclosure inside and out when picking a vapor permeance. However, it can be said that if I have a highly permeable air and water barrier, I can relatively safely put it almost anywhere in the enclosure because it doesn't stop water vapor flow. And then I could add another layer for vapor tightness somewhere else in the wall. Traditionally in very cold climates with high interior humidities, we would put a vapor barrier near the inside. By having a vapor permeable air and water barrier, I have the option now to place it anywhere downstream in that wall system where it can work at best to stop airflow and to uh, effectively shed rainwater. Now sometimes we want to use a vapor barrier, air and water barrier, and there are certain wall designs where we are putting all the insulation on the outside, we have very high interior humidities, very cold exteriors, and we design an assembly where a vapor barrier is needed at the same location as the air and water barrier. And in that situation, you buy a product that does all three. But having a vapor permeable air and water barrier actually gives you a lot of freedom because you can put it right on the outside just behind the cladding or you can put it three quarters of the way in towards the inside on the insulation. Uh, and that won't affect the performance because it doesn't affect the vapor permeance of the whole system or clog it up at any one spot.